Rebecca. My age, you know I've been to a lot of doctors. <laughs> Healthcare partners, they really care. They're concerned about your health. They're all the best. I am Roberta, and I am a healthcare partner. Visit hcpnv.com to hear my story. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. News is also brought to you by the St. Therese Mission, a future venue for cultural and environmental events near Pahrump. Get involved. Visit us at stthereseemission.com or call 702-507-4172. Tonight on News 46, one child is transported from an accident. Miss Senior Golden Years and her court are crowned, and Pahrump Valley High School says goodbye to their senior class. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell and Jason Kodlitz. News 46, local coverage you can count on. And good evening. It's Monday, June 10th, 2013. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Jason Koblenz is up tonight. One two-year-old child was transported with a bloody mouth this morning from a two-vehicle accident on Highway 372. Tonight's accident report is brought to you by Stovall & Associates. Don't expect insurance companies to have your best interest in mind. Stovall & Associates cares. Let us help you if you have been involved in an accident. Uh, we're at the uh, intersection here with uh, Valley Electric and State Route 372. Um, apparently a van was traveling uh, westbound on 372 and then a lime green car pulled out uh, attempting to make a left-hand turn pulled in front of the van. They came out of Valley Electric? Yes. Uh, witnesses state that there was uh, another vehicle that was in the right-hand turn lane making a right turn. Um, I was unable to at this time to interview the other driver um, because of uh, transport to the hospital. I will go follow up on that here. But um, based on the other driver's information, this is very common where somebody pulls out of a driveway or off of a side street and there's another vehicle making a right turn. Everybody needs to remember that if you can't see both lanes clearly, don't pull out into the intersection. Exactly. There's that moment there where you're kind of feeling like you're guessing and it's best to uh, identify that and, and just wait for a minute. Correct. If you can't see the entire, uh, all of the travel lanes, then don't make the turn. It's not worth it. One person was transported? Yes, uh, a small child was transported. Um, I'm told it's not very serious injuries, um, but that's the assessment out here. Of course, we need the, the hospital to verify that, but as of right now, he's in minor condition. And in the van, no one was injured? Uh, no, no one's injured in the van. And will there be a citation here? There will be a citation uh, for the lime green car driver. Um, that driver will, re will receive a citation for failing to yield from a private driveway. You're blocking traffic while uh, this accident is being cleaned up? Yes, traffic is blocked in the uh, two fast lanes uh, so the tow truck could uh, get the vehicles out of the road. An emergency crews responded to a structure fire on the south end of town Friday afternoon. Prompt Valley Farm Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's deputies were dispatched to a structure fire on Friday afternoon, approximately 3 p.m. on the south end of town. Upon arrival, deputies found a long driveway, which was a structure off Worldwind Street and Gamebird. The double wide manufactured dwelling had smoke and flames coming from underneath. Front Valley Fire Rescue ran hoses down the long driveway and Engine 2 also as well went up to the structure to extinguish the blaze. Dispatch was notified that in fact the homeowner was trying to extinguish the blaze on his own with a garden hose. Medics did arrive on scene to check out one person who was apparently suffering from smoke inhalation. That person refused to be transported to a local medical facility. Prompt Valley Fire and Rescue are conducting the investigation of the blaze. This is Deanna O'Donnell on Whirlwind for News 46. And Santa Monica College reopened today under extra security except for the library where police shot and killed a heavily armed gunman after a rampage that left five people dead on Friday. A candlelight vigil is planned for tonight in front of the library. Investigators, meanwhile, are trying to determine why 23-year-old 
John Zawari killed his father and older brother in a home near campus, leaving the house in flames. He fired at a car, wounding the driver, took another motorist hostage, and forced her to drive as he shot at people and a bus in the neighborhood. He shot a woman in the head on campus and was shot and killed by police in the college library after gunning down a total of five people in fewer than 15 minutes. Barbara Vikonovich, who was the first woman to represent Nevada in Congress and went on to serve seven terms, died today in Reno after a short illness. She was 91 years old. Vikonovich had broken her pelvis in February and never fully recovered. Vikonovich was a Republican and was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1982. She was a congresswoman from 1983 to 1997, serving on panels including the House Interior Committee and the House Appropriations Committee. After the break, some other applications your iPhone may be able to do. Could your iPhone spot an infection? Find out next on Prescription Health. Today's news is brought to you in part by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. And welcome back to News 46. Three out of four children will experience an ear infection by the time they are three years old. But soon diagnosing the common problem may not require a trip to the doctor's office. Andrew McIntosh explains. This health tip is brought to you by Humana. Visit our local office in the Prump Valley Junction Shopping Center or call 775-727-0871. You use it to talk, text, play games, but could your phone tell you if your child is sick? 14-month-old Harper Barrett has an ear infection. She just got her second one. It's one of the most common reasons kids see their pediatricians, but mom Megan says it's hard to know when an earache merits a trip to the doctor. If you take her in and she doesn't have an ear infection, then you know you're, it's a waste of time and money. This may be the answer parents like Megan have been waiting for. What this is, is it's a, an iPhone otoscope. The instrument slides right onto the phone. It contains fiber optic cables that connect with the phone's light, along with a small magnifying glass. Open the app, push a button, put it up to the ear, and record a video clip. That's her ear. Do you see your ear? This is what an infected ear looks like. The idea is parents take pictures and video at home, then send it to their doctor, who will tell them if they need to come in. In a clinical trial, researchers found images captured with the iPhone are at least as good as those captured with the standard instrument. We are looking to see if the images on, that we can get from this device are of diagnostic quality. Pediatrician Andy Shane says the new technology is more advanced. So this is a, um, a con what we call a conventional otoscope. The only thing that this is providing is a light source. She says the device could save time, money, and maybe even reduce the use of antibiotics. <laughs> Megan would love to give it a try. Just to be able to check it out on it myself and be able to send it into the doctor would be amazing. I'm Andrew McIntosh reporting. And researchers finished the initial clinical trial in February and are currently working on publishing the results. The company that makes the device is planning to launch it this coming fall. It will likely cost between $99 and $199. Valley Electric Association has issued a press release stating that they are thrilled with Governor Brian Sandoval's decision to veto Assembly Bill 391. The bill would have imposed costly duplicative regulations on the nonprofit utility and raised electric rates for thousands of Nevadans, including many residents on fixed incomes, homeowners, businesses, schools, and other valuable institutions. The 2013 Miss Senior Golden Years was crowned at the Saddle West on Saturday night. I'm in total shock, <laughs> in total shock. It's just, it's wonderful. And I, I want to thank everybody. I really do, but I am in shock. <laughs> you also won another part of the competition. I won the talent, yes. I sang Memories from Cats. So what was it like when you actually found out that you won? A total shock, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> what was it like uh, preparing for this? It was fun. We had a wonderful group of women and we're all great friends and it's just absolutely wonderful to be in this pageant. And I believe we have first runner up right here, another Karen. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Tell me about uh, you coming up first runner up and uh, what, was, what was the competition like for you? I tell you, it was, it was a lot of fun, as always. It was a lot of work, but we really enjoyed it and I'm so happy for Karen and she deserves it. and. 
I hope that uh, everybody enjoyed it. We also won another category too, which was the interview. And uh, what was the interviews like for you? It was pretty comfortable. They always tease me that I'm asking a million questions all the time, so it was fun to have them ask me. So. <laughs> and we have the lovely second runner up here, Elizabeth. Tell me a little bit about your experiences with the Miss Senior Golden Years pageant, why you decided to join too as well. That's a lot of questions. <laughs> Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone. This has been a wonderful experience. I've had a marvelous time. The queen is just phenomenal. <laughs> she deserves it. And so does this first runner-up. I mean, these women are just phenomenal. They really are. We've had a wonderful time. The reason why I joined the Miss Senior Golden Years pageant was to get to know my community better. And with these women, I've done that. And the court, the previous queens and all of that have helped us so much. And I'm just thrilled, just thrilled that I'm a part of this. Was there anything that you guys thought uh, maybe you were nervous about before the competition that maybe they helped you kind of hone in on and uh, get used to and get more comfortable with? Oh, uh, remembering my words. <laughs> <laughs> but after we did it several times, uh, it was it, it was just like falling off a log. You learn how to do it again. For me, I'd have to say it was the platform. No matter how well you know it, when you really get out to, to talk and say it, it's a little bit different. And congratulations to the Queen and her court. 240 Prompt by High School seniors turned their tassel on Friday night to symbolize their advancement from candidate to graduate. The ceremony was held in the evening on the high school's football field. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you would please rise as the class of 2013. 240 Prump Valley High School seniors' long-awaited day finally came Friday night. The class of 2013 were awarded their diplomas by Principal Max Buffy. Sarah Dare Williams. Braxton Lee Harris. Buffy started out the commencement ceremony Tonight, you are attending the best and the greatest show in pro. The high school valedictorian Sarah Dennis gave a speech to her peers with a sprinkle of advice. Of course, our efforts have been just as crucial to our success as our own efforts were, but now it is time for us to achieve our successes all on our own. Following Sarah Dennis's speech was this year's salutatorian, Braxton Harris. To the parents and guardians of the 2013 class, you have watched us grow and guided us in the way that you thought was best for us. Our first breath, first words, first day of school, and so on. You are the ones who took care of us when we were sick, came to our school place, and taught us right from wrong. Friends and family cheered on the graduates as the names were read. Caitlin Elizabeth Tackett. Andrew Christopher Pearson. The night ended with the graduates gathering on the field to toss their hats in the air in celebration. Congratulations to the Prump Valley High School's class of 2013. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. I would like to thank Channel 41 for being here tonight filming graduation, and they will be selling CDs commemorating the event after the ceremony. Parents and the Prump community, as principal of Prump Valley High School, I hereby verify that the class of 2013 has met the graduation requirements of the Nevada State Board of Education, the Nye County School District Board of Trustees, and Prump Valley High School. And congratulations and good luck in the future to the graduates. If you would like to purchase a copy of the 2013 Prump Valley High School graduation, you can give us a call at 727 9400. Don't go anywhere. News 46 will return after this break.